Welcome to the ANSYS tutorial on the simulation of electrical machines using ANSYS Maxwell. In this tutorial I'd like to show you how to configure models of electrical machines using ANSYS Maxwell. What you see here is the graphical user interface of the ANSYS Maxwell program. By clicking on the design we can look at the design variables, for example speed RPM for the speed of the machine, IMAX for the current amplitude, and also parameters that are derived from other parameters, such as electrical frequency, FEL, and also the instantaneous values of the currents, currents A, B, and C. It's immediately apparent that it's not the entire machine that's being modelled. It is rather just a so-called partial model. So let's take a look at the model of this body. Firstly, the two permanent magnets. The first thing is to ensure that the direction of magnetization for the permanent magnets is provided by the local coordinate system. Next we have the copper winding for the three phases and the rotor and stator lamination, and also bodies representing the air domain, which have been allocated a vacuum. I'd like to draw special attention to the body designated band. This is the body which separates moving parts from non-moving parts. As you can see, this body goes as far as the gap centre. When it comes to configuring the model, the first step involves this body designated band. In order to assign motion properties, we go to Assign Band, and this can then be used to define a rotary motion around the global z-axis in the positive mathematical sense. This also enables us to define a starting angle by means of a parameter, and we can also define the rotational speed. In this example, we're going to enter a constant speed using the parameter speed RPM. All the bodies within this band object are automatically recognized as rotating bodies. For the sake of convenience, I'm only overlaying the outer body. The initial boundary conditions will now be defined along this edge. This is a magnetic vector potential, which at the same time constitutes a boundary condition equating to zero and this corresponds to a tangential course taken by the field lines along this edge. Next I'd like to set up the periodic boundary condition, which is a so-called master-slave boundary condition. This edge will be defined as the master, and the other edge as the slave. The master-slave boundary condition projects the fields of the master edge onto the slave edge. This can occur with the appropriate plus or minus sign, or with inverted signs. In that case, a pole is simulated. This is the boundary condition incorporating reversed signs. As all the necessary magnetic boundary conditions have thereby been assigned, I am fading all the bodies back in. We now come to the electrical feed for this machine. We can create windings using add winding for phase A, phase B and phase C. And for the purposes of this demonstration, we can define a current as an electrical feed. The same goes for phase B. It may strike you that the instantaneous value of the currents is provided by these design variables, current A, current B and current C. And finally the last phase, phase C corresponds to the allocation of a variable that provides the instantaneous value of the current. After defining the phases, the term for phase A needs to be geometrically assigned here as positive, and plus A is followed by minus C. The number of conductors is provided by the parameter N slot, and minus C is followed by plus B. So this machine will rotate in a mathematically positive sense. In the final step in defining the winding, we need to assign the terminals, i.e. the individual windings. We can do this very simply via a right mouse click on the windings, and we can then use the command add coils. And we do this for phase A, phase B and phase C. Electrical boundary conditions also need to be defined, as eddy currents in the permanent magnet also need to be included in the simulation. I here select the boundary condition current equals zero, which ensures that no net current enters or leaves. I'd now like to deal with some mesh settings. 
for example a maximum element size for the permanent magnets. So we select here 2mm for example, and we do the same for the phase windings. In this case 8mm. Also a maximum element size for the laminations. Let's say 6. And also a mesh operation of 1mm edge size on these mesh control lines to aid with measurement. OK, that should be enough when it comes to mesh operations. What we're lacking is an analysis setup, which we can create by clicking the right mouse button, then selecting Add Solution Setup. We'll now simulate some specific electrical periods, stating the time step of course. Using the Save Fields tab, we can select the time steps for which separate field results need to be entered. We confirm everything with OK, and the model is now completely configured. And by clicking Analyze, we can start the simulation. We can see from the progress bar that the calculations are being done. And while this is happening, we can already see the first results with respect to the time steps that have just been simulated. For example, the torque, as seen here. This graph is updated in real time, while the calculations are still being made. For the sake of clarity, I'll set the minimum value of the y-axis to zero. And we can now see the path of the torque. The simulation has now been completed for one full electrical period. This diagram shows the path taken by the torque during this process, including average torque and torque ripple. Let's take a look at some additional results, in the form of a diagram. We'll take a diagram showing the losses as our example. Here we can see three graphs representing the three loss components relating to this machine. Firstly the blue one, representing the ohmic loss in the windings. Then the red one, representing the iron losses in the ferromagnetic components which have begun to oscillate. And in violet, the ohmic losses resulting from induced eddy currents in the permanent magnets which are also oscillating at this point. We can moreover look at the field results, distributed result quantities, for example the magnetic flux density in the ferrous components, designated B. It's of course necessary to specify a point in time where we want to examine this result quantity. We see that here. And we can also examine the current density in the windings, designated J. and finally also the magnetic field lines in the simulated domains. For the sake of clarity I'd like to change the colour of the field lines to black. And it's now possible for the user to evaluate these distributed field sizes in a very convenient manner. It's very easy to generate an animation for all the simulated time steps. Clicking on Animate enables the user to examine the field results during this entire turning process with just a quick glance. OK, that brings us to the end of this CAD-FEM tutorial. So it's goodbye from me, and I hope you enjoy creating your own simulations.